You ever have one of those moments where you know you're about to say something that's gonna get you punched in the mouth? This is one of those times. So Batman tells the story of Batman and the Joker as they both rise in Gotham City. What is up everybody and welcome to my quick little Batman review series. Uh, we have the new Batman coming out. I don't know if you heard about it or not. Kind of a big deal. Coming out next week, I will be reviewing that film on the 2nd, I believe. And so, before that comes out, I wanted to talk about the Batman films that I have yet to talk about on this channel. I have already reviewed the Nolan trilogy when I did my Christopher Nolan review series, and I have already reviewed Batman Returns. We did a little Secret Santa movie review thing a few years ago, and my buddy Brian Lomax, the biggest Batman fanatic you will ever meet in your life, bestowed upon me the right to review Batman Returns. So all of those movies are already on this channel, as well as both versions of Justice League, <laughs> the one we don't talk about and the one that people won't stop talking about. So we're going to talk about Batman 1989. We're going to talk about the two Schumacher films. I'm going to talk about BVS, and I'm going to talk about Mask of the Phantasm. You're going to get all those reviews leading up to my review of the new Matt Reeves film. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of rankings, ranking the films, ranking the Batman actors, ranking the live action villains if it's taken off like crazy and you guys have batman fever the way that i do maybe i'll do even more but as of right now that is my plan and we are going to be starting of course with batman 1989 tim burton's batman now i need to say this right off of the rip i have never been a big fan of any pre-nolan batman movies i grew up with these films as a kid like a lot of people in my generation did and even though some of these movies i enjoyed as a kid none of them have really transferred over into being movies that I appreciate as an adult. So, if you are a diehard fan of this movie, if you are somebody that this was such an important film to you, this is one of your favorite movies of all time, and you don't have the ability to hear genuine criticism of it, turn off the review now, because... I have a lot to say about this movie that you're probably not going to like. So Batman 1989 quite literally is one of those landmark, earth-shattering comic book films. This was one of the pioneers. This was a movie that came out and not only totally changed the landscape of how the pop culture viewed Batman, how all of us casual movie audiences viewed Batman, but also changed how Hollywood approached comic book films. Previous to this, really the only thing that we had was the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, which are a lot lighter, a lot goofier, a lot campier. And before Batman 1989 came out, even though there was some different directions taken in the comic book world, the only version of Batman that most of us knew was this one. Nowadays, you say Batman, you think dark, you think brooding, you think of a voice, and it's just these things that are just synonymous with Batman nowadays. Tim Burton's Batman is one of the larger reasons why the pop culture shifted to that version of Batman. If it wasn't for Tim Burton, whether or not I like this movie or not, we might still be getting the pow, bang, slam Batman. Who the fuck knows? And on top of all of the things that it did for pop culture, for Batman, for comic book movies, this is one of those films that you often hear people bring out when they talk about movies that are most important to them. Anybody that was a kid, a teenager, even a lot of adults that were there in 1989 whenever this hit the theaters and just was a gigantic pop culture behemoth, it's something that they always remember, something they always have tons of nostalgia for, and even decades later when we have things like the Dark Knight trilogy, when we have the MCU, when we have things like the Zack Snyder's Justice League and all of that, people still will call out the 1989 Batman as being one of their favorite comic book movies and maybe even one of their favorite films of their entire lifetime. But after sifting through all of the nostalgia, does this movie still hold up? Was this movie even that great to begin with? Let's talk about it. So starting off with the positives for Batman 1989, the main thing that has always stood out to me about this movie, especially since I'm somebody that has said numerous times, not really a big Tim Burton fan, that his direction, his style, his eye for the strange, his, his way of bringing set designs and costume designs and just making a world 
in his movies, I think is probably best displayed in his Batman movies. You could almost argue that only the Tim Burton films really make Gotham feel like a character. As wonderful as the Nolan trilogy is, as awesome as BVS can be in spots and Justice League and any movie that we have seen different variations of Gotham City, this is the only one, this and Batman Returns, that really make Gotham feel like this living, breathing thing in the movie. From the set design to the way that he utilizes fog and darkness and even down to the costumes, all of that is just the best representation of Tim Burton at his best for me personally. For somebody that always is a little bit put off by how strange he can be sometimes, his Batman films are the only time where I really embrace how far he goes with art direction. The other part of this movie that has always stuck with me is the Danny Elfman score. Now, nowadays things tend to be a lot more operatic, they're a lot more epic, they're you know, just a different flavor of scores, but this score by itself almost defines an entire decade for me. Like, it, the cartoon, the animated series, these two movies, even like pieces of the other movies seem to take inspiration from Danny Elfman's original score. And it's just something that's iconic for me. It's something that no matter how many decades pass, no matter how many different evolutions of this character that we get, that will always probably be the most iconic, most instantly recognizable Batman score that I will ever have in my lifetime. There's very few comic book scores out there that really feel like they capture the essence of the character within the music. There's some wonderful scores. There are some epic scores, some absolutely iconic scores like Portals in Avengers Endgame that just gives you goosebumps because of the moment you remember hearing that score. But there is only a very select few that just feel like the character. This is one of them. As far as the cast goes, I really like Michael Keaton as Batman, Bruce Wayne, and I really like Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Not really bringing anything new to the conversation by saying that, it's like, well, no shit. Uh, but as somebody that has always liked Michael Keaton, and even before he started to have this renaissance in Hollywood over the past decade, he's always been one of those guys that I just kind of cherish. I like his comedies, like Multiplicity is probably my favorite movie by him, that's just, that's my pick. And uh, it was a very odd role for him to take at the time. It's something that no matter how many times we're proven wrong about a casting looking strange and then ending up being brilliant, he is one of those examples where they're like, hey, yeah, we're gonna get Beetlejuice to play Batman. And everybody went, what the fuck are you thinking? What are you? I'm Batman. But I kind of like the quieter edge to his Batman. His Batman doesn't really stand out a whole lot in either of these films. His Bruce Wayne isn't really like this overly memorable character, but that kind of makes him memorable in a certain way. He's very soft-spoken. He's very quiet about his plan. He's got this quiet confidence to him. He's not blurbing out all this exposition and having this dialect with Alfred as they go back and forth about what they're gonna do or anything like that. Anything that he decides to do, we just see it whenever it happens. And there's always just been like this, this, this internalized person that it feels like he brought out with his version of Bruce Wayne and Batman that I kind of like. He's always been this larger than life character. He's always been somebody that the more iterations we have tend to have different little nuances to them. And I think that the original, him in this and Batman Returns is something that stands out as just like this very broken person that is very quiet and is very subtle in the way that it come across. Let me tell you about this guy I know, Jack. Mean kid, bad seed, hurt people. I like him already. <laughs> and of course, Jack Nicholson's Joker, often brought up as one of the best comic book villains on screen of all time. He's not my favorite Joker, never has been. There's always been a little too much with his, you know, I'm laughing at myself shtick, but he's very iconic, he's very memorable. And you could almost argue he's honestly the star of this movie, not just because he steals most of the scenes that he's in, but a lot of the narrative focus goes to his character of Jack Napier eventually becoming the Joker and all of his scattered plans, which we'll get into. Uh, it's more so a Joker movie than it is a Batman movie. And so he tends to be the character that's talked about the most in reference to this 1989 film. And for somebody that doesn't necessarily fit what you would go for for the Joker as far as being, you know, comic book accurate where he's this younger guy, he's very slender and uh, to a point where they make him so skinny that he's just physically not imposing whatsoever because his intellect and his insanity 
far outweighs anything that he will ever have to do in a fight. That version of Joker is not exactly what we get here. You know, Jack Nicholson was a lot older. He doesn't necessarily fit a physicality side of this role, but it's all about his ability as an actor. And especially when you have somebody that's famous for playing Jack Torrance going nuts, he dials that up to about 13 in this movie. So he's a quiet gangster that's, you know, got this edge to him that's certainly evil. And then as soon as the smile comes, he's just a fucking nasty ass clown that's just let out onto Gotham City. And that is a version of Joker that a lot of people still hold dear, still consider their favorite version of the character to this day. Moving on to the mixed, we have the action sequences here, and it's not the movie's fault. The movie aged. The, all movies age. Eventually we'll be talking about how action sequences we just saw last year that were amazing don't look so good anymore. And so it's the easy shot to take in a movie that came out in 1989. The action hasn't aged all that well. It's not as exciting as things we have nowadays. Duh. Uh, the action that we have here, I think that they do pull off pretty well with what they had in 1989, though. There's not a ton of it. There's actually a long stretch of this movie where you don't really have any Batman action whatsoever, but a lot of gunfire, uh, the way that they were able to do, like, practical effects regarding the Batwing and the Batmobile still hold up pretty well. I mean, they look a little goofy compared to some of the things we have nowadays, but there's something that has a charm about that. Uh, there, there's some of that a bit of nostalgia for movies of that era that's very much at play here when you start looking into things in the technical aspects. So while I appreciate and I always get a little bit of a smile on my face looking at how older films were able to pull off action with what they had back then, it's certainly not a movie that you would go to for its action. Now moving on to the negatives. Remember my warning at the beginning of this video. I think the story in this movie sucks. <laughs> I'll be dead honest with you. This is a movie that even as a kid, I never really gravitated towards. For somebody that Batman has always, always been my favorite comic book character, my entire life, it's very strange that even though I grew up being born in 1990, just a year after this movie came out, that I never really loved any of the early Batman movies. Even this one in Batman Returns, which are still pretty widely recognized as great movies for the most part. Not only just Tim Burton fans, but Batman fans alike. And I don't exactly know if it was because of the story, but watching it as an adult, it's really dull. I mean, there's a lot of things plot-wise in this movie that not only just don't connect in the way that you would expect a script to connect, but there's just not really a whole lot here. There's no substance to what's going on. It's essentially just Batman and Joker showing up for the first time and having a pissing contest for 90 minutes. And while that leads to some good individual scenes, there's nothing story-wise in this movie that I have ever been drawn to and I probably will never be drawn to. I watched it just an hour ago and through most of it, I'm like, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> like Batman shows up, Batman goes away, the Joker rises, he's got this plot with pharmaceutical stuff to put the city in fear, uh, he's going to a museum, he gets the hots for Vicki Vale, then Batman decides that even though he ghosted Vicki Vale, he kind of has the hots for her too, and now they're just kind of battling it out, and then you have this whole parade sequence where the entire city is scared to death of this guy, and he's just sitting there dancing on a float, nobody tries to take a shot at him, and then eventually Batman and him have a little blow to blow because we find out that he killed Batman's parents. Five minutes after they showed us that Batman's parents were actually killed in an alley. So it's just, it's a very awkwardly written movie. It's a very awkwardly paced movie for those reasons alone. And when I go to Batman, especially nowadays, I expect a lot of story. I expect thematic elements. I expect some really deep storytelling with Batman. If any comic book character, it's Batman. And even though this movie was revolutionary for 1989, I think you almost require nostalgia goggles to look back at this and say that that was really a great movie. I mean, what exactly is Joker's plan in this movie? This is his movie. He's the star of the film. He's the one that gets all the narrative focus. What is his plan? He, he goes crazy, he kills the guys that set him up. Okay, cool. That's done in the first five minutes of him being Joker. Then he decides to poison the pharmaceutical shit to put people in fear. Okay, fine. Fear's more of a scarecrow thing, but we'll go with fear. And then later on, he's trying to steal some art and realizes that there's this hot-ass blonde in you know, Gotham City and, 
oh my God, I have to have her. And then it just kind of becomes about her throughout the last half. And yet he's still trying to gas Gotham. And it just, it feels like he's just doing evil shit for the sake of it. And, and not in a chaos way that you would expect this character to do, where you know, there, there's no meaning, there's no, there's no lesson to be learned here. You know, I just do things. There, there's no version of that in this character. It's just the script has him does shit. I understand the excitement for what seemed awesome in 1989. I understand the importance for changing the landscape for Batman. I understand the iconic nature of getting an Oscar winner to play Joker. I understand all of that, but I have just never felt like this was really that good of a movie. And I'm actually really excited to rewatch Batman Returns because though I've never been a giant fan of that movie either, I've always felt like it was obviously inferior to the original 1989 Batman. But if memory serves me correct, there's way more plot-wise going on in the second film. So after re-watching this one, I might surprise myself and re-watch Batman Returns and go, oh wow, that movie's really fucking weird, but I actually like it more. And it was funny, because watching it this time, once it got to about halfway through the movie, I suddenly latched onto this idea that this entire thing was written just to be this pissing contest between Batman and Joker battling it out to see who gets to stick their dick in Vicky Vale. Yes! That's awesome! And the entire last half of the movie just proved all of that 100% true. That's really the only tangible story that you have that's really set up followed through and brought to a conclusion in this film is Vicki Vale brought out to be this piece of ass that Batman and Joker are just swooned over and battling it out constantly to the point where it's hilarious. I mean, you have Bruce Wayne that is just kind of quietly allured to her whenever she's in his mansion, immediately fucks her, ghosts her, gives her absolutely no time of day whatsoever while she's just standing around like, I thought it was a really special night between us, didn't you think so? And he's like, uh, yeah, okay, gotta go. I'm looking all over for you, I gotta get out of here pronto, I got a stage five clinger. And it's only after Joker takes interest in Vicki Vale does he decide, mm, no, no, that's my bitch. Why did you bring me here? Well, you could have sent that stuff to the press yourself. You're right. There is something else you have that I want. What? That ass. It was hilarious. Like, I, I don't know if that's really been discussed with this movie, if I'm bringing something new to light or if I just saw it in a comedic way because of the mood that I was in. But for all of the dozens and dozens of love interests that we have had in comic book movies, this one just absolute face value looked like Batman was just trying to establish dominance for over an hour of this film. And kind of going along with that whole Vicki Vale storyline, she is included in this when I say that I don't think any of the side characters in this movie are all that interesting. They don't stand out. There's no secret why most of them don't come back for any of the sequels. And so that right there is just something else that's really missing from this. I mean, you look at the better versions, in my opinion, of these movies, and some of the side characters are almost as memorable as Batman himself. Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, whatever love interest he's focusing on during that time. There's something that's just missing in this movie when it just feels like the only people you're really paying attention to on screen is Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Now we gotta talk about comic book accuracy a little bit. Now, I'm not somebody that holds out the comics like it's a Bible that you have to follow, but what I find is funny is the hypocrisy with this movie. So we just had Batman v Superman and Justice League and Batfleck, that entire era, just get put through the fucking meat grinder, mostly because Batman kills in that movie. And everybody was like, oh my God, what the fuck are you doing, Zack Snyder? You're just, you're molding all these people into your vision. This guy suck. How many people did Michael Keaton kill in this movie alone? I haven't even got to the second movie. This dude was dropping motherfuckers off of roofs. He was blowing bitches up. I mean, he killed Joker twice, basically, in this movie. All the same people that are probably bitching about the comic book accuracy of Batfleck are probably the ones that say that Batman 1989 is one of the greatest movies ever. Ah, make up your melons. The whole storyline about the Joker actually being the one that killed his parents in Crime Alley I mean, I understand what Tim Burton was going for with that idea, trying to make it to where the Joker created Batman and then Batman created the Joker and trying to have this poetry to it. Fine. 
but the way that they execute it in the movie is pretty laughable, and no pun intended. Uh, there's this whole storyline where Vicki Vale finds out later on in the movie, like in the last act, that Bruce Wayne saw his parents killed in Crime Alley. How they lead up to this whole mystery is that she literally watches him go into Crime Alley, put some roses on the ground, and walk away. It's one scene in the entire fucking movie, and it's made out to be like this big thing when it really wasn't. I mean, it's a blink and miss it moment. And then whenever you get the flashback sequence that shows his parents being killed and a young person with a big ass grin that you're supposed to connect the dots as Jack Nicholson when he was younger, that is given to us just like minutes after we find out that Batman's parents were killed. I mean, comic book fans already knew that. Movie audiences probably didn't in 1989, but it's literally giving like this revelation for something that was never a mystery in the movie whatsoever. It, it's just, it's fucking odd the way that they executed it. It could have been done really well. The idea on paper has some merit, but the execution, new. And we need to talk about Alfred just walking Vicky Vale into the Batcave. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> I understand Alfred's from a different era. And again, this is going to sound misogynistic, but this is 1989. This is, I didn't make this fucking movie. The guy literally fucked Vicki Vale and then ghosted her. And then Alfred is just like, here, he's Batman. Discuss. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, surprise, I'm Batman. All right, uh, Vicki, can you go wait down the hall for me really quick? I just need to talk with Alfred. Yeah, I appreciate it. Dude, you were literally going to wash my balls with a fucking loofah tonight. I mean, I understand that that was probably just a writing gap where they were like, we need her to know that he's Batman. Alfred's just going to walk her in. But comic book fans are like, he needs to die. Shoot him now. And my final negative, and this one might be the one that gets me in most trouble. I don't really know. I've never really liked the bat suit. I understand it's classic. I understand it's iconic. I understand it means a lot to people, but I have always found it really funny, the pre- movable neck versions of Batman. I mean, there's so many scenes where like, he has to look up and he's like, and then he's trying to fight and it's like, shit, fuck, fuck. It's just always been this weird logic thing with me where I'm like, you're a billionaire, you can build the fucking bat wing, but you can't put in a collar. So strange that The Dark Knight was the first movie to actually address that. We even had Batman Begins go through one of those suits with the solid neck. It's just, very odd to me. Overall, guys, this is a movie that I will put into the category of I appreciate more than I actually enjoy. I totally get and appreciate the legacy that this movie has, the importance of this movie, the value that it has to probably the vast majority of you guys that are watching this. And I love the fact that it was that movie for you. And I'm jealous jealous genuinely that it was not that movie for me but i've just always had this disconnect with this film as well as pretty much all of the 80s and 90s batman movies and so i think that the art direction and everything that tim burton did this is the one time the one time when i really appreciate him as a visual director but like pretty much every single one of his other movies being my main criticism of him as a storyteller is that his movies are all flash, all style, very little substance, and that is ringing 100% true for me with the 1989 Batman. So if you have never seen any of the older Batman films and you wanna see where it all started in 1989, definitely check this thing out and have your expectations tempered for a film that was iconic and important for the time, but probably has not aged very well. So check this thing out online and stream it. So what do you guys think about the 1989 Batman movie? I know, I know, I'm a piece of shit. I should die, I should get off of YouTube. I know, I know. But let me know down below what you honestly think about it. Are you somebody that grew up with this film? You love it, you watched it recently, think that it holds up? Are you somebody that grew up with this movie and just never really got into it all that much? Give me all of the different opinions on this film so that I can see what the current climate is for how people appreciate or don't appreciate this movie. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of this little quick Batman review series and my eventual review of my most anticipated movie of the year coming out next week, Matt Reeves' The Batman. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.